Brock Purdy has to be one of the most unlikely stories in the NFL this season. Before this year, no Mr. Irrelevant had ever thrown a forward pass in the league. Purdy has thrown for four touchdowns in two starts and is the 9-4 San Francisco 49ers starting quarterback going forward. He is Mr. Relevant. The San Francisco 49ers entered the year with three quarterbacks on the roster. The name starter was Trey Lance. It was a big deal for Lance to start. San Francisco drafted him third overall overall at the 2021 NFL Draft, but he sat behind Jimmy Garoppolo for most of the season. 2022 was supposed to be his year to show what he had, but he ended up suffering a season-ending ankle injury in Week 2. That thrusted Jimmy Garoppolo back into the starting gig. All offseason, the wonder was if the 49ers would trade Garoppolo. Instead, he took a pay cut in San Francisco, and it ended up paying off big time because he started most of the year for the Niners. But in Week 13, Garoppolo went down with a foot injury. That pushed third stringer Brock Purdy into the fire, and he played pretty well. It wasn't his first appearance of the year. He came in for Garoppolo in a Week 7 blowout to the Chiefs. Purdy had 66 yards and threw a pick. In his relief in Week 13, Purdy played much better. He threw for 210 yards and two touchdowns with a single pick, and San Fran won 33-17. His single touchdown pass was the first ever by a Mr. Irrelevant. Brock Purdy made his first career start in Week 14 versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and yes, Tom Brady. Well, again, the San Francisco 49ers found a way to not just win, but dominate 35 to 7. And safe to say, Purdy looked pretty good in that game. I hate myself for saying that. I'm sorry, guys. He completed 16 of 21 passes for 185 yards and two touchdowns, and even rushed for a touchdown. I want to look at these three scores too, because Purdy looked impressive. I'm not saying he's the second coming of Tom Brady, but for a guy that was quite literally the last pick at the draft eight months ago, Purdy looked fantastic. He scored on a two yard rush to start the second quarter, and there was a bit more to this play than just a simple scramble out. The pocket collapses very fast, and Purdy is able to stay calm and maneuver around, but that still wasn't enough. Devin White is right there on the goal line, and that's surely a dude that I don't want to get hit by. Purdy makes a move, and he's able to slip by. His first passing touchdown came later in the quarter. Ball is on the 27-yard line, and Purdy drops back and is immediately hit with a ton of pressure. The Buccaneers brought the blitz, but Purdy stays in the pocket and hits Christian McCaffrey off of his back foot. It's a great pass. I mean, it's almost almost not a touchdown, but it's close and it counted. Finally, 15 seconds left in the half. This is right after Brock Purdy threw a pick in the triple coverage, but it was called back due to a penalty. For one, Brandon Ayuk, he's a top guy in most offenses, but he has to share targets with Debo Samuel, George Kittle, and Christian McCaffrey. He's going up the seam and hits a pretty nasty double move before catching a touchdown from 32 yards out. What was really impressive here was the pump fake from Brock Purdy. Purdy pumps like he's going short over to the sideline or right in front of him to McCaffrey. That frees the defense long enough for Ayuk to really get through and get open. Honestly, that's a veteran move. There were some really impressive plays from Brock Purdy. Of course, he still does have his growing pains and somewhat of a lack of understanding of some concepts, but I think he's absolutely good enough to help the 49ers make a serious run. He is Mr. Relevant, but how did he get there? Brock Purdy was born on December 27th, 1999 in Queen Creek, Arizona. He has a really athletic family. His dad played baseball at Miami and then spent some time in the minors. His older sister played softball at Southeastern University, and his younger brother is a quarterback at Nebraska, where he transferred after two years at Florida State. Brock Purdy played varsity football as a sophomore at Perry High School in Gilbert, Arizona. He led Perry to the state semifinals as a junior and a finalist for state player of the year after throwing for 3,300 yards and 42 touchdowns while also rushing for 840 yards and six touchdowns. His senior year was absolutely incredible though. Purdy was on a different level. He threw for 4,405 yards and 57 touchdowns touchdowns, both of which are 6A state records. Purdy also rushed for over 1,000 yards and 10 touchdowns and was the Gatorade Arizona Player of the Year. Brock Purdy was considered a three-star recruit, the 12th best player in Arizona, and the 26th best pro-style quarterback in the class. He had a handful of offers, most notably from Alabama, but opted to commit to Iowa State. Brock Purdy entered his freshman year at Iowa State as the third stringer, but did quickly find himself as the starter. He started eight games, 
Jones and passed for 2,250 yards and 16 touchdowns to 7 interceptions. His 169.9 passer rating was the 6th best in college football. On the ground, Purdy added over 300 yards and 5 touchdowns. He started in every game for the Cyclones as a sophomore. Purdy threw for almost 4,000 yards and 27 touchdowns to 9 interceptions and rushed for 250 yards and 8 touchdowns. Iowa State went 7-6 and six, and Purdy was named second team all Big 12. He did see a statistical decline in 2020 though, but he was named first team all Big 12 for his first of two straight seasons. Purdy threw for 2,750 yards and 19 touchdowns to 9 interceptions and rushed for almost 400 yards and 5 touchdowns. The Cyclones were suddenly really good though. Brees Hall emerged as a top running back in the country, and it showed. Iowa State went 9-3 and, and was as high as number 9 in the nation. The Cyclones began 2021 at number 7, but ended up disappointing at 7-6. and six. Purdy led the Big 12 with a 71.7 completion percentage, and he threw for 3,200 yards and 19 touchdowns to 8 interceptions, and rushed for 200 yards and a touchdown. Purdy ended his time at Iowa State with 32 school records, over 12,100 100 yards, 81 touchdowns to 33 interceptions, and 1,200 yards and 19 touchdowns on the ground. Now, Brock Purdy wasn't exactly viewed as a top pick at the 2022 NFL Draft. NFL.com gave him a prospect grade of 5.57, which is the draft projection of a priority free agent. There were some very good things to like about Brock Purdy, though. He was a four-year starter and the leader at Iowa State. His analysis from Lance Zerloin claimed that Purdy was a different quarterback when he found his rhythm and makes his way through his progressions. He has strong hands for pump fakes and is an accurate passer between the numbers and can throw over linebackers and in front of safeties. In terms of on the ground, Purdy had good toughness and anticipation and was willing to dive to move the chains. There were plenty of weaknesses in his game that Zerloin outlined though. The big one that stuck out to me is that his confidence and consistency had been issues. Brock Purdy wasn't a guy that I watched a ton of film on at Iowa State, I'll just be honest, but I did watch the big games and the Cyclones were a top team in the country here and there. His delivery was very odd, and Zerloin did claim he didn't have the timing to beat NFL corners outside of the numbers. He also shied away from tight window throws and didn't get the ball out on time on deep routes. Sometimes, he just wouldn't see a guy open for a big play, and his pocket movement wasn't really very quick. From what I can see from just about every scouting report on the internet, Brock Purdy was projected to go undrafted, but he didn't. The 49ers had the 262 second and final pick at the 2022 NFL Draft and selected Purdy, making him Mr. Irrelevant, the nickname given to the last pick of the draft. Here's the thing though, Brock Purdy isn't irrelevant. He's Mr. Irrelevant. He's the starting quarterback of one of the most talented teams in football, and if he can play just even average, there's a chance San Francisco can make a run and find itself not just deep in the playoffs, but in the Super Bowl.